Welcome, everybody. Um, this is my talk about building the next-gen healthcare platform using cloud-native bingo. Now, before I get started, let me first introduce who I am. My name is Niels Beelzeer, and I'm a research and development architect working for Corillus. And as you can see by the picture, I'm a father of two children. My wife is also in that picture, but she didn't want to be on the slide, so I had to cut her out. Now, show of hands, who knows Corillus? Who's heard of our company before? Yeah, oh, of course, the three guys working there. That's uh, kind of logical. Uh, for everyone else, we're a Belgian company, and we build software for the healthcare sector. So anything you can imagine from general practitioners to dentists to elderly homes to psychologists, we do them all. We have software for all of them. Next to that, we also have our Helena platform. And that's maybe something you're a little bit more aware of, but it's something really oriented towards the patients. Now, my talk goes about cloud-native bingo. Now, there's no need to take out your phones and start searching for this next big thing that will solve all your problems. I'm actually talking about this. And this is a little bit old school, but this is just regular bingo. And that's the kind of feeling I had when I first looked at the Cloud Native Foundation landscape. And for those who don't know Cloud Native Foundation, it's a hub of all different open source and vendor neutral computing, uh, cloud computing frameworks. And to give you an idea how it looks, it's this. It's full and full of all different icons, frameworks, uh, you name it. If you combine the Apache Foundation on top of that, it's really, really big. And my feeling when I first looked at this was, wow, I get to play a giant set of bingo, because I have to pick something out of this, and I have no idea what it's going to do. And that's basically what we did. We looked at everything, and we started evaluating all different frameworks, all different products, and we came up with our own little platform bingo. And that's this chart. Now, most of you will probably realize and notice a lot of the icons on there. So we have Apache Kafka. I think that's fairly obvious for most. We have Ansible. We have Grafana. We have Prometheus. We have React Native. We have Micro Frontends. We have Open Policy Agent, Hibernate, Java, .NET, Python. Basically, we have a whole range of different tools and different frameworks that we use. And I really, really, really love to talk to you about all of them. But unfortunately, I only have 15 minutes, so I'll just pick out the ones that will get me my bingo for this game. And I think we should start with the one on the top left, which is a cornerstone in our architecture, but also a cornerstone in our platform bingo. And that's service-oriented. Now, I'm one of those architects who don't, doesn't like to yell, hey, we're doing microservices. It, for me, doesn't really fit. What we are building is we're building service-oriented components. We're building ser we have a service-oriented approach. And that, didn't always, that, that wasn't always the case within Corillus. We used to build big on-premise applications we used to build client-server monolithical applications. And we started to realize that it means that we have to build the same thing a couple of times. And that's where we said, OK, we need to transition. We need to do that transformation from monolithical applications into something that scales and that's easily used. And that's where we came up. We didn't invent it, but that's where we came up with the service-oriented approach. So we're basically building fit-for-purpose services that are functionally contained with what they need to do. This will get me my first dot on my bingo card. It's the service-oriented part, and it's the cornerstone. It's a very, very important part of our architecture. Now, once we realize that we have an architecture that we're building from scratch, and we're trying to transition from the old approach to the new approach, we had to start thinking about, OK, how are we going to build this? As you can see, we have .NET on there. We have Python on there. 
But of course, we have to have Java on there as well. And within our traditional monolithical applications, we had a very, very good knowledge of everything that's Spring related. So we had Spring framework knowledge in-house. We still have today. So we looked into Quarkus, we looked into Micronaut, we looked into Akka, we looked into Scala. But in the end, we just realized that, OK, Spring Boot is where we have our foundation and is where we have the most knowledge. And we can use that and we can leverage that to build our new services. <clears throat> we combined all of that with the fact that we are also transitioning to common libraries. And I heard during the key keynote this morning that you have to build security into your common components. And that's exactly what we are doing. We have our audit framework, our audit common component. We have our multi-tenancy common component. And that basically allows us to take any Spring Boot application, any Spring Boot service that we have today, we include our common libraries, and it immediately gets into a multi-tenancy mode. And for us, multi-tenancy is very, very important. But I'll get back to that later on. The fact that we chose Java also allowed us to do those first steps into AI and machine learning. Currently, we're using Opta Planner for this. I think most of you know it because it's also used for DevOps scheduling, etc. Uh, and that allows us to really start building AI solvers and really start building planning software that we also can sell to our customers. So moving on, I already have two dots. And now we get to the most important one, the one that is in the center, not only in my platform bingo, but also in the center of the vision of the company. So we have our connecting care vision. And that is, we are patient-centric. We are patient-centric in our architecture. We are patient-centric in our vision. And most importantly, we are patient-centric in our data security. It means that for us, your data, your patient data is the most important thing that we have. We do not host this data into a public cloud service. We have a private cloud service where we have full control over what is happening to your data. And we have data on everyone. We have, we have a very high market share in Belgium. We have more than a million users of the Helena app. So we have data of almost every Belgian citizen. And for us, that's very important that it's embedded into the way that we build our platform. So we've made it a little over halfway, and then we get to the tricky part. So we built the architecture. We found a way to develop everything. We have our priority straight, meaning patience. Now we have to get into that deployment part. Now this morning, I heard also, I think during the keynote, I heard a lot of laughter in the room when Kubernetes was mentioned. And everyone says, OK, doing Kubernetes is very hard. I'm not here to tell otherwise. But we did a full transition from our legacy deployment to Kubernetes in less than five months. And we started from scratch on that deployment. OK, it was a very steep learning curve. but. If you build your applications the right way and you get that container-driven approach from the beginning, you can actually move to Kubernetes very quickly. And this is actually opening up a whole new realm of deployment for us. It's a whole new realm of features that we can offer to our customers. We can get to market with new services very quickly where we used to have to wait weeks and weeks on cloud operations to get something up and running, today it's a matter of hours before we can configure with our DevOps teams the right containers to get started. And it has really, really helped us out a lot. And of course, with great power like Kubernetes, there's a lot of extra stuff that needs to be built. So we have Grafana, we have Prometheus, that's all in there. So we really had to build everything from scratch there as well.
So that gets me almost all the way to the last part. And that's something that I hold very dear. It's something that I see as the next big thing. And for me, that's data mesh. So for those who, of you who don't know data mesh, I always translate it as saying what microservices did for our operational plane, data mesh will do for our analytical plane. Let's move away from data warehouses, data lakes, and let's start building data meshes. Let's see that we can integrate into our services the possibility not only to build REST APIs for our operational plane, but also build data products that we can actually leverage by other domains, other services, to build new functionality. And although that's another step of complexity that we're adding into our entire platform, we can actually already see the use cases today. We can actually go to our product teams and say, hey, if you combine this data product and this data product, it will give you new features you can provide to your customers. And if we can provide features to our customers, they can provide better health care to the patients. And I think that's where we need to head in the future. That's where the data-driven healthcare comes from. We need to get those, that data, we need to get those data products up and running, and we need to provide this and make sure that our healthcare practitioners, our dentists, our general practitioners can get that data to give better healthcare. And that's basically what gets me my bingo. So we did a transition from the top left to the top right. I only talked about a couple of subjects. I really love to talk to, to you about all of them, but unfortunately, I don't have the time for that. Um, we are also looking for people with, to work with us. As you can see, there are a couple of blanks in that bingo card, and uh, we are looking for people to help us build more tools and build more stuff into that bingo card. So if you're interested, don't hesitate. The QR code will get you to jobs.krillis.be or we are at this booth uh, right next door. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>